Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Here's my mom, Trish. We Good morning. Are, we are at her house for a couple days. We are dropping the girls off for the week. Thank you, mom. <laughs> and uh, while we drop them off, we are getting a couple gardening things done. And my mom agreed to have us do uh, an updated garden tour. So a couple months ago, I did a garden tour of their home, of their garden. This is a new home, for, a relatively new home, but the landscaping is basically brand new. It's not even a year old. So it's really interesting to see what is fill in, filling in really well, what is doing great, what is not doing great, all that kind of stuff, which which just comes with new landscaping. I have to say, I think it looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful. You like it, right? I do. I yeah. <laughs> so um, my mom has her book. She's very organized <laughs> with all the plants. So we can show you guys all the plants. She lives in Redding, California, which is uh, zone 9B. They live on the top of a hill and you can see the beautiful view in the background. It is very hot and it is very windy here. So that is some of the things that um, she's dealing with, they're dealing with, is the heat and the dry wind. And then it's built on bedrock. And so the drainage here is absolutely a nightmare. So it's kind of funny, there's too much water, but then not enough water at the same time. So it's kind of a difficult garden bed, but I think that they're doing a really good job with it. So um, I'm gonna do my best, or we're gonna do our best for identifying all the plants, but we're of course, I'm of course gonna put it down on the screen below so you guys can see um, if we make a mistake or we say the wrong thing. Uh, I'll put it on the screen, I'll put the correct thing on the screen. <laughs> all right, you ready? Yes. All let's right, go. let's go. Okay, so we'll get started over here. This is right by my mom's office, what she calls an office. Um, she does a lot of card making there, right? <laughs> So, a little bit. <laughs> a lot of it. So right out here, this is um, a new patio that was that was laid uh, since the last time we've been here. It's beautiful. What's going to go here? Like a little patio set or yes. something? Yes, uh, and a pergola. Oh, and a pergola. Oh, that'll look good. But you guys can see this view. It's just insane. I love it. So right out here, she did some pots with some annuals that are looking gorgeous. I can see these are super bells, great punch, some pink pentis. Absolutely beautiful, mom. And then the other thing that was done since the last time we were here is this whole area down the hill. Um, so this fence right here is actually just a deer fence. They have deers and bunnies and it, foxes it. and mountain lions and coyotes. and coyotes and everything. So the fence is just an effort to try and keep a little bit of stuff out, but their property goes all the way back. Um, it's just, you know, how far, how far really do you need to put the fence back? So they put it right down there and then they had the landscape designer come in and they did red yarrow kind of all around rosemary. And then right here is some dwarf phlox, which should be really, really pretty. So more of a natural yarrow is pretty natural, uh, native to this area. Um, so this is kind of a more natural setting, which I think will be really, really pretty. But then up here, she's got this border all along here. She's got Got borders you have borders all over your garden that's gorgeous so osteospermum right african daisy gorgeous color some sparkling amethyst superbina some sun coleus do you know the name of that sun coleus it's doing so well though, so pretty, and I like that pop of red. And then she has this lantana, this uh, lantana bandana cherry. cherry. One, two, three, four, all around there. And it's really, really pretty, and the hummingbirds love it. There are birds everywhere in this garden. I see a hummingbird right over there. I mean, they just like talk about a pollinator garden. It's fantastic. So a little bit of French lavender. Then we have a pugster pink uh, budlia or butterfly bush, which is really, really pretty. And my mom said that when it first bloomed, the blooms were giant, twice the size. Twice the size. So this is the second bloom, but it's really pretty. So it's, it's interesting. You can see the pugster is right here. And then the lo and behold blue chip is right there. So you can kind of see the difference. It's so funny. When I first saw this, I thought this was a dwarf lilac, like a California lilac. But but it's not, it's a Budlia and I just think it's really pretty and I wanna get some of these in my garden. So really good butterfly bushes do really well in this climate. Right, mom? Right. For some winter interest, there's Laura Pedlum everywhere. 
which is really good. It kind of blends in right now because it's this dark red foliage, but it's going to get the really pretty fringe. It's, it's also called a Chinese fringe flower. So that's going to be beautiful and that will grow up, you know, what, what would you say? Four to five feet? Uh, maybe not quite, but three to four maybe three to four feet um yeah so that will be really pretty and it'll be gorgeous winter interest oh do you guys see oh, i'm trying to get the hummingbirds <laughs> it's hard to get them you guys see that there they are these these hummingbirds are everywhere good job mom you're doing good with the hummingbirds all right, and then moving a little bit further over here, you can see this is her cat, Buddy, on a leash. <laughs> so the cat is loving its life. It loves being out here on the leash. Um, it's, it's just for safety and things like that. There's just too many wild animals around this area for the cat not to be on a leash. Hi. He's, he's happy. So he's right underneath an olive tree. This is a sterile olive so that they don't have to worry about the mess of the olive tree, but it's really beautiful and olives are super olive trees are super common around here. This I showed you guys in a video earlier this week. This is her bubblegum uh hedge that I planted for her for Mother's Day. It looks gorgeous and then we have the Super Junior Vista silverberry. Don't start. Don't start. <laughs> it looks beautiful, mom. <laughs> <laughs> it looks gorgeous. Um, then we have some salvia that's doing really well as well. I think that this is going to be a perennial in this area. Um, this, what is it? Fuchsia? It's rock and fuchsia. Rock and fuchsia salvia from Proven Winners. I think that that's going to be a perennial and it'll just get bigger and bigger uh, each year because it acts like a perennial in my yard, which um, I think it'll be perfect. Some Rudbeckia, she grew from seed, right? And then it's looking beautiful. And then right here in the middle, this is a little gem magnolia. It's starting to bloom. Sorry about the wind, you guys. I don't have my microphone on. So beautiful. Gorgeous. So this tree is going to get really big. It's going to be kind of like the focal point in their garden. Um, it's going to be really pretty. And then you can see this bubblegum. It's just loving its life. It's so happy. So we were talking about, here, let me, let's come over here so that we can show. We were talking about what we were gonna do behind the bubble gum. And I think what would be really pretty is if we did three vertigo penicetums right there, and then maybe some Carl Forster grass, which is, so vertigo penicetum is like a dark purpley color. And then the Carl Forster, the, um, is kind of like a golden color. And I think it will match their house perfectly. And it will do just a little bit to cover that utility Hole right there. My dad is very, very strong-willed <laughs> about not blocking his view. He does not want me to plant anything that's going to block his view. So I have to be really strategic because I do think that they need a little bit more height kind of over here. Um, and so I think three vertigos over there, maybe one right there. And then I'll show you guys, I planted some other ones right there um, yesterday. So that should be really pretty. Don't you think? Yes. We just have to convince dad. <laughs> so here there's some uh, verbena. This one is not too happy. I think it, there was something wrong with the dripper. Um, but this one is not the proven winners. This is just regular generic like magenta color. Firehouse burgundy. Firehouse burgundy, mom says. And then this one is the, the superbena so blue. Dark blue. Dark blue. Okay. I'll get these names, you guys. And then here's some little mandra in, in back here. That's going to get about two to three feet tall, and it's going to do a nice little border. Um, but I do think it will still be pretty with a little bit more height, especially right behind the pool wall right there. I think that that will, that will look really good. So here's the project we worked on yesterday, or one of the projects we worked on yesterday, and they call this their pool walkway garden bed, and it basically borders each side of their pool walkway. And the landscape designer put some stuff in here that was really pretty, but it just wasn't the right choices just based on the water conditions that they have here. So they run their sprinklers and then there's hard pan underneath this. And so the sprinkler water seeps in and it, it wets these two garden beds. So basically it's, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. It's such a funny area. They, you know, it's hot, it's dry here. You would think everything that's drought tolerant would thrive here. But as soon as you put a lawn in, which they had to put a lawn in, it's just too hot here um, to not have some 
something that would cool the area down. Um, as soon as you put a lawn in here, all of a sudden you need to put in plants that are moisture loving. So when we went to Wintour Gardens, which is the uh, nursery close by here, we found these hibiscus, which is the honeymoon light pink. They are so beautiful. I'm so excited about these. I kind of want them in my yard. I do have the summerific hibiscus from Proven Winners in my yard that should be um, blooming pretty soon, but I am just loving this. And then, so this is the pink, and then we did that against all this other purple stuff, um, in <laughs> including heliotrope and uh, supertunia bordeaux, and then some veronica right here, and it's just looking beautiful. Oh, and then mom wants me to point out the little Henry Sweet Spire, which is just going to be a, like a workhorse, right? Yes, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for that plant too. I think it's going to be so happy and it's, um, I, you know, so basically this is this, a little Henry Sweet Spire from Proven Winners. It can take shade, part shade or sun and it likes wet feet. So it is absolutely the perfect plant to plant right next to a lawn or like a boggy area that you like cannot, you can't get a hold of the water. That's just going to be a, such a fantastic plant for it. So I'm really excited to see that start to get a little bit bigger, a little bit more mature and start to bloom. And that's something I will say, everything in this garden is very immature. It's only months old. So this is kind of like a before shot of everything. This is how it's going to look like, you know, right when you plant it and then and over the next couple years it's going to fill in and it's going to be absolutely beautiful but this is the very initial phase of this garden and I'm I I think it looks great already it is beautiful it's so pretty Okay, so here's what we call their uh, bird garden bed. And the reason why we call it that is that the birds are insane. So there's a couple bird feeders. I just scared them all away. But there's one, two, three bird feeders here. They are all over it. See? There's bird feeders here all over it all the time. And then she has this beautiful fountain that I want and I'm trying to get my hands on without paying astronomical shipping prices, of course. Um, and the birds are just so happy. So what we have to do or what I think you have to do is you have to put some birdhouses out here so that they can start nesting. But this whole area, we kind of we kind of move things around a little bit. Um, we put these uh, petunias in here. These are the honey something what are they called bees knees, bees, knees super tunias not super tunias bees knees petunias and they're very pretty we are having a little bit of issues with the drip right there so that's why that's sticking out um we're kind of just you know moving things around this is a crepe myrtle tree that is totally butted up and ready to bloom and we are really bummed that it didn't bloom <laughs> in time for this garden tour but it will be absolutely will be covered in blossoms so I'm really excited to see that you'll have to send us pictures of that um, and then what uh, I did yesterday is I started we got three vertigo penicetums one two three these are going to get about six feet tall but don't say that to my dad because of course he's afraid of his of us blocking his view but I think it'll look really pretty and it'll just kind of hug this area of the pool and then we're going to do you know like one or two more right there and then three more right there so you still get the whole view but it's just going to kind of um I don't know cradle the whole area and make it you know make it look more dynamic and I think that that will be really pretty so I'm excited for those to start growing um and also vertigo penicetum it's going to be a perennial in in this zone it's a perennial in my garden they get huge they get massive and the hardest thing about these plants is that you have to cut them back in January and that is that's tough oh there's another hummingbird <laughs> they're all over they're so happy okay so this is their um uh, their master bedroom and then there's their bistro set let me show you guys the new garden bed that we did right here so this is now always known as the tutor garden bed it's right by their master bathroom we worked on this my dad worked on this with me he installed this um uh, trellis that there's an Eden climbing rose that's going to grow up that I made this to tour for them I have a video on that I will link it down below um, and then we just did the limelight hydrangeas all behind it we have the Halls Japonica that's going to climb up the to tour and look gorgeous uh, the sparkling amethyst superbina and then the Helen von Stein lambs here that's a little dirty right now but um that's just because Jason and I mulched it back here so yeah I am I love 
love this garden bed. I think it's going to be so beautiful once it all fills in and grows in. And it's just going to be like kind of spilling over with color, with the purple color. It's going to look so, so pretty. Um, so this is another garden bed that we're dealing with the weird drainage issues that they have. So the Helen von Stein, I didn't even hook that up to drip at this point because I think it's going to get enough residual water where I put water to the hydrangeas and I put water to the honeysuckle and to the superbina. I think it's going to get enough residual water just because the drainage is so tough in this area. So it's been really interesting. It's been kind of fun to kind of uh, troubleshoot the whole garden and see what's going to work and see what's not going to work, you know, and we will see over over time what things thrive and what things hate its life <laughs> here so we will see how they do but it's like I said it's been really really interesting okay so this wall right here this is just a wall to block all the pool equipment all the pool equipment's behind there but right in front they have three green spire euonymus is that the right Correct. Okay, green spire euonymus, and those are going to get pretty big. And then in between each of them, more of the Laura Pedlum or the Chinese fringe flower for um, for winter interest. So it's really funny. I have to point this out. They have sunflower weeds pretty much everywhere. And the reason is because the birds, the, especially the, what is it? Um, the woodpeckers? Yeah, the woodpeckers in the trees, the blue jays in the so the woodpeckers will take the sunflowers and they'll hide them in the trees. And then the blue jays will take the sunflowers and will hide them in the mulch. And so it's so funny. Um, there's basically sunflowers everywhere, little sunflower weeds everywhere. So that's something that they have to stay on top of. But it's really pretty. My daughter Shay, she's, she, I just heard her asking dad why he doesn't leave the sunflower weeds because they'd be so pretty because there'd be sunflowers everywhere. <laughs> so, and he's like, I don't want sunflowers in my grass. <laughs> Okay, so they do have some lighting up here on this. Um, they do have landscape lighting uh, on this wall, and it looks absolutely beautiful at night. So I think once that grows in, it's going to look really gorgeous. Now, another huge change that they have since the last time I was here. I think I showed you guys these boxes last time I was here. These are um, raised beds that my dad built for my mom. They're made out of redwood, and they're stained this beautiful natural color. And this is actually the stain, the, the same thing that I did the tutor. Let me spin you guys around slowly. So this tutor, I made it out of redwood and then stained it the same color. Well, my dad stained it, I should say. <laughs> my dad stained it the same color as the raised beds. So it kind of, it matches, it coordinates, and it looks really, really good together. So the garden beds are overflowing at this point. Look at all these tomatoes. They are definitely happy here in this climate. Tons and tons of tomatoes. I've been snacking on them when we've been working out here. And then these are the micro dwarf tomatoes that don't look like dwarfs here. So they're obviously happy. They're at the end of their life. They're at the end. Of, mine are at the end of their life too. Mine are just about done too. Yeah. Okay. So the big thing that I wanted to show you guys is this border. So what they did is they had the landscape designer come out and you can see it, you know, everything slopes down. So they, um, what do you call it? They like propped it up or yeah. something. Yeah. They put in a board, um, a metal border here. They put in a metal border and then filled it with soil, like this beautiful loamy soil. And so then mom planted all of these and now it's this gorgeous mixed border. And this is still super young. This is only like less than a month old at this point and it's going to look amazing. It's going to look so, so pretty once everything fills in. So let's see, let's start from here. I'll just go through really quick and, and talk to you guys about some of the the big ones that stand out. These are Shasta daisies. Did you grow those from seed? No. Oh, bought you bought those. This mm -hmm. looks like a crazy daisy, yeah. but I'm not sure. I don't know what the, what, yeah, what the variety is. is. So this one is one I wanted to talk about. I have never put Nepeta or Catmint in my garden because I usually don't like how it looks once it fades. It's, you know, our... Um, our climate is a little bit dry for Nepeta, I feel like, so I, I never really want to do it. However, this is a variety. It's called Junior Walker, and um, they sell this at Wintour Gardens, the nursery here in Reading, and my mom planted this. She has another one over there, and it has just been looking gorgeous for so long. So it obviously does really well here in this climate. A lot of Nepeta is only hardy or only good up to zone eight, and so it's obviously just too, the heat is too much 
for it, but this Junior Walker variety is fantastic. So when we were at Winter Gardens yesterday, I bought a whole flat of these and I'm going to put them in my cottage garden and I can't wait because I think they're beautiful. So then we have some cone flower. And then in addition to that Junior Walker, this is, here, let me just show you here. This is a pink Veronica. And this is a, I don't, do you know the name of this? It's a Speedwell Spicata, I think is how you pronounce yeah. it. Yeah. Do you know the variety name? Uh, no. No. Okay. So this is, um, in the pool walkway garden beds, we planted a purple Veronica that does really well in zone nine. And this is the other variety of it. Um, oh, mom says it's called pink damask, pink damask. So this is another variety, pink damask and junior Walker, uh, Nepeta. The two of them together just look so beautiful. So I bought a whole bunch of these as well, but they're good. They're hardy till zone nine. Um, so they're going to handle the heat. And the people at the nursery said that they're really, really good for hot environments. So if you guys live in a hot climate, like we do junior Walker, Nepeta and pink damask Veronica, I mean, they're a hit and I cannot wait to get them in my garden. All right. So moving on, um, we have some marigolds. No, Coreopsis. Oh, Coreopsis, excuse me. And then what's that cute thing? It's just, it's just a little um, marguerite that I found on the clearance rack oh. at Lowe's. Clearance <laughs> rack shopping, Mom! I'm impressed! <laughs> Couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. <laughs> Dead, but then I came and I put it. It looks great. <laughs> okay, so Marguerite Daisy at the from the clearance rack at Lowe's. That's fantastic. Then she planted some uh, plants that she grew from seed, and I was making fun of her because she planted them like four inches apart. <laughs> Would you stop, please? <laughs> okay, so these are sunflowers. These are dwarf sunflowers, so I think that those will be okay. Um, but these are coral coral fountain amaranth, and she had those like that far apart from <laughs> Uh, Sorry, mom. <laughs> so we moved them, we separated them, and they're going to be so beautiful. If you guys have seen coral fountain, coral, am I saying that right? I think so. Coral yeah. fountain amaranth. I grew it last year in my cut flower garden, and it's gorgeous, and it's massive. It's giant. So it's going to be really pretty. These are pr uh, proven winners. Adjuratum, adjuratum. I don't remember the name. Something like that. Something like that. I'll put it on the screen. But then we did find some Jupiter's Beard Red Valerian, which I want. So this is another one that's like mixed border cottage gar garden. Does really well in our climate. So I just think this with the Veronica and the Nepeta, so, so beautiful. This is another rose that she got at the same time with the Eden Climbing Rose. This is the Litchfield Angel, and that's a white one. It is. And yeah. It's going to get huge. It's going to get huge, but it'll be so pretty. It'll be gorgeous. She did buy some sparkling rose superbina that's not in bloom right now. This just came from mail order, so it's not looking the best. It's looking a little bit leggy, but that should fill in, look really pretty. And then some more Shasta daisies over here. And then when we were at the store, I thought, uh, an artichoke plant would be perfect. And I think that'll be so cute. And that is a perennial. So you can just kind of leave it there. Mm -hmm. Right. It'll be really, really gorgeous. Yeah. And I couldn't resist. I could put a couple more burgundy amaranth. Oh, of course. <laughs> Mom, that is going to be, <laughs> that's going to be too close. <laughs> This, we'll see what happens. Oh my goodness. So so this mix border is going to be very, very full just based on the spacing that she chose. <laughs> but it'll be pretty. And then let's see. We have um, Mystic Spires. No, not Mystic Spires. The Proven Winners version. Oh, that's the Rock and Play and the Blues. Rock and Play and the Blues Sal Salvia. I usually get the Mystic Spires version, but this one, I have actually never tried this version in my oh, garden. It's supposed to get about four feet tall okay. you know, and large. So yeah. I wanted to try it. Yeah. Different and, variety. And then these, oh, there's Stanley. Hey, Stan. Um, and then these are uh, Rudbeckia that we found. Mm -hmm. What were they called? Do you remember? Autumn Colors. Autumn Colors Rudbeckia. Oh, it's just going to be so beautiful once this whole thing grows in. One thing I did want to show you guys real quick, she does have a zucchini plant. Well, it's kind of a zucchini plant in here. Look at how tiny this thing is. I mean, my zucchini plant is like five times the size at this point. So I think I want to try, let me get out of this. I would think I want to try this variety. This is called a bush baby marrow, she says, um, zucchini. which is a type of zucchini. Here's some 
pretty red pentis right there. Um, but yeah, look at how tiny this is. So let me show you what the, what they look like. Oh, you have them right there. These are huge. I mean, these got out of hand. So she left these obviously too long. Um, but you can see what they look like, the striped version of it. So you, you know, you obviously pick them when they're smaller than that. But I think that this is the variety I want to try in my garden next year, just because, I mean, this is, this, this has been in my garden, her garden, longer than my zucchini plant has been in my garden and it is so much smaller. So I think I'm going to go with this next year because mine is out of hand, absolutely out of hand. She's got some red bell pepper going. She's got some dahlias in here. Beautiful. And then what else? So some, what is this? Jalapenos. Jalapenos. Yeah, these, uh, these are uh, baby spaghetti squash. Do they taste the same? I Have you haven't tried it yet. Huh. So, interesting. But just going crazy. It looks good. It looks beautiful. And more plants to plant, of course. All right, everyone. So that is it for a garden tour of my parents' yard. We're only doing the backyard because the front yard, there hasn't been much change. Again, this garden is only a couple of months old. It's going to fill in over the next couple years, but everything's looking really, really good. Really lush and beautiful and I would like to pick some of the stuff up and take it to my garden. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section and I'll have my mom try and answer them as best as we oh, can. <laughs> and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today. Bye.